<laughs> did you did you uh old man the mute mutton again there boy no, <laughs> no. that's not how it happened that's exactly what happened <laughs> Uh, <laughs> take three. <laughs> uh, Holy shit. What up, Bone Ponies? Welcome to the Tabletop Totality Podcast. I'm Cody. I'm an old man. Um, we've been sitting here <laughs> trying to record the podcast, and I just keep screwing things up. Anyway, something I can't screw up. Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. <laughs> we're uh, at, yay! Yeah. I have a pretty good record. Um, we're looking at Candlekeep Mysteries today, which is the newest publication, not the newest, but pretty new publication from uh, Dungeons and Dragons and Wizards of the Coast. And it is for uh, characters of level 1 through 16. And it's got 17 different adventures in it. Which is uh, that's pretty amount. fantabulous, yeah. <laughs> anyway, just a quick, quick little pew, 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 sponsorship for our own stuff. Uh, pretty much, make sure you go on over to tabletoptotality.com. From there, you can go to our Patreon. You can get some exclusive Tabletop Totality merch oh, through my goodness. Publix. And just see everything we're doing throughout any point in the year month day whatever week it is that you're looking as we do also promote all of our extra street extra life streams and live plays right on the website and they usually get updated a little bit at the beginning of the month for what we're doing at the end of the month but uh besides all that we are also now on drive through rpg a great yep. publishing service for anybody making Pretty much any tabletop role playing game, uh, cards for them. They do a bunch of different stuff. They publish both uh, print, like a Dungeons and Dragons book, or even PDF uh, electronic copies of everything. So all of our PDFs are going to be going there. And that is going to be another place where you can purchase our other PDFs that we are creating that are going to be a little nice top tier level stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're we're going to continue to release our free content, but we are also going to um, put a couple adventures behind a small paywall to help us um, keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. Yep. And uh, let's get into it. I, I think uh, last thing real quick is that if you're listening to us on um, any platform other than YouTube, True. you can go to anchor.fm and you can actually support the podcast directly because uh, we have listener sponsorship on so if you'd like to help us out we would really appreciate it yeah yep. and all of that just comes right back into all the content we're creating if we're reaching out to other artists to be able to design some of our creatures and everything like that we try and give back to the community as much as we try and create for it yeah pretty much any support that you provide for us is going to feed into uh, more stuff for you that we're going to be producing so yes mm -hmm. correct yep all right, so now on that to... mystery has been solved. Mystery solved, Neil. Well <laughs> done. Why can't you? Why can't you do this, Steve? You know this pleasant banter between friends. I'm sorry. It's uh, it, he's just too young and and too quick too hit, for me. I'm agile. sorry. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It happens. I'm getting old. <sighs> what can I say? I know. <laughs> Thanks. I know. I don't. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, kiddo. <laughs> um, so I guess to start with Candlekeep Mysteries, uh, the the first thing that I would like to bring up is that the book is it's well it's well put together, and they brought in a lot of I say new blood. It's not new blood. The, a lot of these writers are people that are established in the greater D and D role playing community. Mm -hmm. A lot of these people focus strictly on storytelling, which is cool. Uh, storytelling is the big thing for us. We try to focus on that a lot, um, depending on whatever role playing game we're talking about. And this book is certainly role play heavy, and it was nice to see that they brought in new authors to create these stories 
Um, I'm not saying that in a bad way about the previous uh, additions, uh, you know, the previous offerings from Dungeons and Dragons and from Wizards, oh, but I. Hey, the, offerings, uh, yeah. yeah. To, to the masses, here's yeah. our offering. <laughs> well, um, you know, not to mince words, but without a fan base, they don't have a business, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, it's cool that they have gone out into the community and kind of tapped people from it to contribute to it, and certainly that's a really exciting aspect for for people like us uh, who do similar, where we are creating adventures and. So far, we've actually had some we've had some responses from other people in the community about collaborations and things like that. So I think that that's a good move from Wizards being kind of the big, you know, like the the big name in role playing to be doing that to be tapping, you know, people that are outside of their payroll to come in and and contribute to the world of mm -hmm. D and D. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that would be my first point that I'd like to say about Candlekeep. Um, secondly, I also, also want to just, that's one of like, I think the few points that a lot of people don't automatically realize, right? Not too many people are looking at who the author is for each one of these uh, pre-made adventures or anything like that. So that's one of the things that kind of goes by without notice, I think, the most. Is that, hey, here's, if the writing style looks different for a lot of their other stuff, it's because it is different. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I think that, you know, people have become accustomed to, okay, well, this is Chris Perkins doing this, or mm -hmm. this is, you know, this is Matt Mercer, you know, this is the Exandria or the Wild Mount books, yep. you know. This is set within, you know, this is set within a uh, a famous D&D &D setting of Candlekeep, mm -hmm. but it does not have to be set there. It can be plug yeah. and play anywhere. So it's cool that they've kind of like they've they've kept it involved, but they've also brought in the new, you know, the new blood. Yeah. Um so I, I think I think that was a good move that they did. Yeah. And it's also it's also really cool the way that it's um despite it being all these different authors, uh because of the constraints that were placed on them for like the theme of the of each thing having to be based out of candle keep and based around books and things like that. Um, it really goes to show, like, how, um, how, 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 how simple it is, but also how much talent is required to do it in order to create a, um, like, a setting and a, and a, and a, and a game, like, a short campaign. Like, all of these, I've, I, I looked through some of them, and all of them kind of follow the same kind of flow, where it's like, here is an item that you need to find, or you need to, uh, that you need to look for, and, um, it will lead you to a location uh, that's related to Candlekeep, and then there's a map of that location, and then there's a monster there that is a unique monster that you need to deal with, and that's kind of you know the whole. It thing had like a, it had like a format. All, yeah. yeah, all of them follow kind of the same format, and that's kind of like it kind of sets up like a good format for creating you know your own campaign. So even if you don't use the book, if you're kind of running out of ideas you can at least use that as sort of like a template for like how to construct a like a one shot or like a short campaign yeah and i would i would like to I, i'd like to pigtail on that and just say like you know we said before that it runs from level one through 16 and it's 17 different adventures it's i don't believe the intention of the book is for you to start um in the first yeah, yeah in the first adventure and play through this as a means of leveling up your characters or as a basis of a campaign yeah. these are really just starting points or, or side quests yes yeah absolutely like they don't really relate to each other at all they're just all like other than taking place in the same location but they all use different characters in that in candle keep and different items and things and locations right. in candle keep as like right. the basis but they're more of to set up like either your characters are going to candle keep or they're starting in candle keep to start off a story or continue a story that has already been happening. Mm -hmm. uh, the other, you know, the other thing is too, is that it doesn't, um, the, the writing is well done in this so that it's not wasted. So you don't feel that just because they have like that similar formula, it doesn't mean that you're getting a cookie cutter adventure that you're getting, yeah. you know, everything falls in the same mold. Um, there is a lot of you know these items have a past they have history 
they have interacted with other characters. Mm -hmm. They have been in other aspects. Like there's a book that's related to Barovia. Yeah. You know, there's 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 tie-ins to other right. Areas. This is a book that's from Waterdeep, and mm -hmm. you know, so it doesn't. It's not wasted on that. It's not like oh, we just threw together these little tiny um, missions, but it's not enough that you could really say like oh, this is a full campaign because it's yeah. not. So this but, isn't, you know, this isn't necessarily a book for you to use as a campaign for you to sit there and run from start to finish. It is a good starting point. It's a good, um, I didn't have anything planned for my players this evening and I'm going to run them on a one shot. That's what this book is good for. Uh, yeah. And I, I think you could totally, you could totally start something here that could become a very big campaign it could become a full campaign but i don't think any one of the missions is fleshed out enough with enough detail that it's its own you know multi-level yeah. yeah time consuming campaign that's that's just not what you're getting out of this yeah. yeah all of them are designed to be very quick one or two night adventures yeah uh, basically you you should be able to sit down with somebody and finish one of these missions in under six hours, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so now I know like for myself, you know, in my setting of, of Talaraxia, there's a dwarven city, uh, Mount Hatha in stone in the common tongue. And in Mount Hatha, there is this famous library where the dwarves have just kind of hoarded information uh from all over the continent for for centuries yeah. and it's kind of like a it's another form of wealth to them and it's called the arcanum and it's this huge library and my players go to the arcanum quite a bit to research magic items or find out about artifacts that they've come they've uncovered or try to get clues on mysteries and old religions they use it all the time so this book would be excellent if i was so minded to say oh okay well you know, I don't really have much planned tonight, but my players want to hang out in Mount Hatha and do an adventure. I could easy tailor one of these right. adventures yeah. to fit in my in my setting, and I think you could do that really um, in any world. Yeah, you know, yeah. Waterdeep certainly has a library. I'm sure that could house anything similar to Candlekeep. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's a pretty good statement. I would think. Yeah, and if not something from Candlekeep, then something at least inspired from it. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah, that's that's the other beauty. Now you're getting these all these other stories and pathways developed that you can kind of be like, oh, that's a cool way. I never thought about doing it that way, and then take it into your own world. So mm -hmm. there's always benefit from any of these books. Yeah, that's for sure. So I think really what we're trying to say is, you know, who who is this? You know, who's this book for? Does everybody need to go and buy this book? And um, it's not so much like a uh, salt marsh or an Eberron where there's like a, a you know, there's, setting. there's like a real yeah. world setting and there's laws to that, like to that world. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Candle keep is a setting and it has its rules and it has its culture. Um, but it, it's, it's a place, not so much a, a whole world, a whole mm. society, you know? Yeah. Um, so this this book is really, you know, I, I think this is this is a good tool for a dungeon master, and I think it's a good tool for somebody who is probably a little bit skilled at you know making up things on the fly or mm -hmm. just kind of running things you know on, on the go. Mm -hmm. um, these missions are, you know, they're 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 thought out and they're well done, but I think maybe some of them they don't give a good enough overview to start with. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is, could be really time consuming. I think that could be hard for a, for a younger dungeon master. Uh, just from my experiences, I, I think I would imagine people getting caught up on some of those things where yeah. oh, I, I don't know the answer to a question that my player just asked me because it's about this particular world or this particular place. And now I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes trying to find the answer to that. And I'm going to lose my momentum and, yeah. and, and lose my audience. And I've seen that happen a lot. And I think that you have to just be comfortable enough to be like, I don't really know, but I'm going to go with this. Or 
this is the decision I'm making now, and I will find you the answer uh, yeah. when we're done playing, you know? Yep. Yeah, no, it's definitely, I, I just going through it, reading adventures and everything like that, I think it would be amazing for somebody coming into Dungeons & Dragons trying to fill that DM role for their group. And it allows you to see how a formula for a quest should be. Hey, you find this item or this magic thing, you gotta talk to this person, then this happens, and then this is this is the end-all, be-all. And that's very much what Candlekeep Mysteries does in all of its adventures. Yeah. You know, that formula is very important as a as a DM. And if you can learn it sooner the better, great. Because then you can become that off the cuff person because you know at least the general outline of it. Yeah. Would it have been better to get a little bit more in depth of an overview? So at least that that DM going into it. I mean, I, I've voiced this opinion before with uh pre-maids a lot of the pre-made stuff it is they'll go through it of what the players will hit first and then in the last bit of that chapter is all this random stuff that you can do as a dm but it's easy to miss all of that because it wasn't right in the beginning you yeah know, it wasn't in that overview section of hey remember when you're going to here and here this can happen or there's well, it, this, it, this overarching story that ties in these two other NPCs. Yeah. That you it, should probably be hinting at, you know what it's I mean? Like when, when we used to make videos, you know, we used to make videos like cinematography in high school and in college and everything. And one of the big things that I always like really stuck with me was storyboarding, like mm -hmm. actually just sitting there and just linear, just this is what happens to this. You know, and if you get that at the beginning, if you say, hey, like the players are going to go here, they're going to encounter this, and then this is the resolution, mm -hmm. that helps at least so that the, the the DM or whoever's running the game can sit there and say, all right, I know where I'm at. You know, I know that next this has to happen. Yeah. So I can tweak things to get it to go to that. Yeah. yeah. And that's, yeah. that's kind of, I don't want to get off the track, but that's kind of what we talked about a little bit about not having everything figured out. You don't want yeah. to have a huge lack of information where you don't know what's going on, but you want to be able to have enough wiggle room that you can just say like, yeah, all right, this is maybe not what Chris Perkins intended, but this is what was right for my players. Yep. Yeah. Yep. This is what was good for my table, so this is how I did it. Yeah. And even and even if that description is is there, it doesn't mean that you have to follow it 100%. Like if if your players go off on a different tangent, like it gives you an idea of where the story is supposed to go, mm -hmm. but if the players go off on like a tangent or something, at least you're like, okay, they didn't do this. So now what so now I have to figure out this that and that but also having like you said having those answers provided at the beginning is is also extremely important and you know i i look through it and there are descriptions of every uh every campaign in there at the beginning of the book in the first chapter but they're like two or three sentences that describe the entire yeah. encounter and they're very like they, there's a very, few that are more in depth but yeah there's they're, they're, they're the very majority loose. of them are very very um simple yeah they're very like it's like oh there's something happening here what's going on and it's like it doesn't tell me anything that as the dm i don't know what's going like you need to tell me what's going on because then they're going to be like well what's this and that and it's like oh well, i gotta look through like you're saying it's like i gotta look through the whole thing in order to answer that one question well it's also like i don't understand if it's like if, is it like a marketing thing or is it just is it just poor is it just poor like planning like are you trying to make me read the whole adventure yeah. to figure it out yeah, you it's know, really or, like it's like I already. I, I think it would be better to have all that stuff right up front, so that mm -hmm. I could sit there and go, "All right, this is who I have at my table tonight. I don't have anything planned. I'm going to look through this book, and I'm going to say, okay, yep, they're 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 interested in finding out something about necromancy. Okay, well, here's boom, this book here's that necromancy. deals with necromancy yeah. and a lich, yeah. and flip right to it and boom, and run with it. Yep. Yeah. Instead of sitting there going, "Well, I'm not really sure where this goes, and I had to read the whole book." Yep. Yeah. You know? yeah and then yeah because like it's like you could have like at the beginning i don't i don't remember what all of them are but it could be like one is like like something about like a pirate treasure and it's like oh my my players love pirates let's go do this pirate thing and then it's like oh no it's just like there's mention of a book about pirates and then the rest of it is like a murder mystery revolving around clues from this pirate book or whatever and it's like well, it and i think you do with, with i that. think you brought us to a good point too and is that we should explain like 
this book is not for the hack and slash dungeon crawl, yes. killing the monsters in their own lair. Like yeah. that's that's not what this book is. This book is a mystery themed book. Uh, it's going to be a lot of talking to people. It's going to be a lot of investigating and mm-hmm. finding clues, and that is also fun. Um, yeah. We've had. Yeah. I, I think it's a great. I think it's a great thing. Is like. Your, your players leave their safe space and they're out traveling. Yes, that's when you hit them with monsters and you hit them with what's going on in your world. But when they get back to their base, you know, they they have it a little easy. That's when you can kind of do things like the mysteries and investigating. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And uh, that's what I try to do anyway. So for me, like I said, like, yeah, the Candlekeep would be right at home in, in Mount Hatha and the Arcanum. Um, but I wouldn't give this to like, I don't know that I would give this to my first group of players because I think yeah. I think there's something about getting your first group of players and like having them fight kobolds or goblins yeah. or something that like gets them well, in, it you, keeps know? Them hooked, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah, and yes. it helps. It, yeah, and it helps them understand thing. the mechanics of yeah. the game. Well, not even just that. There's a whole reason why, like back in medieval time, gladiators and watching people fight in the Colosseum was entertaining. Like that aspect of combat, two people. Are you not entertained? Is, exactly is is an entertaining thing, and like, and that still plays down into any games you're playing, if it's tabletop RPGs or not. Like, if right. there's if if there's no level of combat, like a lot of people lose interest a lot sooner, even mm-hmm. if they still would enjoy it. Yeah, so I, yeah. and I feel like Dungeons and Dragons is very similar to that. You gotta, yeah. you know, you hit people with, "Hey, look at how fun it is! You just killed a dragon. Now let's RP for ten sessions." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a a year long shopping episode. Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah. And, and it is it is a very much a role play heavy book. Um, but that doesn't mean that there aren't like interesting monsters and there aren't things yeah. that are based around monsters in it. There's like a whole, but the monsters in it aren't aren't like you go in and you fight them they're more like psychological like there's one mm. there's one uh story in there in particular where the characters are investigating an abandoned town where there are these creatures that are basically invading people through their nightmares and turning them into monsters and like they like the book describes these creatures and it's like they're not going to attack your players as a group you know they're going to try to single them out and create illusions and get into their heads and try to like make them go crazy and turn into these creatures rather than just going in and being like, well, we're just going to beat, we're, like, let's just beat them up. You yeah. know, it's, it's, there's, there, the creatures are more, are more cunning than, it's than your standard, your standard goblins or kobolds who are just going to rush in and, and just have like a regular type yeah. of combat. Yeah. And, and I don't, I, I just don't think that it's, you know, like I, I mentioned this in one of our last podcasts, but our buddy Sean, who plays with us, you know, he, he went from playing a very complicated paladin and he played a very complicated cleric and he, he was a spellcaster before that. And he just had like these like really big characters that had big storylines and had big plots and everything. And when he came to play in Tallaraxia, he flat out was like, I just want to be big, dumb, and hit shit. And yeah. hit shit hard. Yeah. And he was like, I want to play a very simple barbarian. That's just what I want to do. And okay, so maybe that maybe Candle Keep is not for that particular character. You know? So you you, yeah. you have to you're gonna have to gauge that yourself, you know. But I, I would think that this book is not very it's not a dungeon. It's not a, a monster hunt. Like, yes, you might encounter creatures and things like that, but it's not going to be. Well, you know, it's not like an overwhelming encounters. Not know? even, not even just that though. As we say with all of our work that we put out, if there's something you like, change it to how it's going to fit your players. If there's right. if there's a whole adventure that you would be like, ah, this is a little bit RP heavy for what my players want. Add in more combat. Change up a little bit of stuff. You already have the base formula of point A, point B, point C. Now just in between point A and B, now there's 12 kobolds you have to kill before you find the NPC who tells you more about what the book is. You know, or, or exactly. something along those lines. So it's it's all stuff that's very easily un- enough to be tweaked and formatted to what you need at the table. But I wouldn't recommend it for any player. If you're an all-time player, don't worry about this book. All-time DM might be a good addition. You know, if you're in the middle, eh, why not? You know, why not? You, you got to run some stuff occasionally. You do a lot of the one shots. That's a good book to have. You know, you're you're not really a DM who's trying to create your own 
world that lasts for a year or more, yeah, this might be the this might be a decent book to have in your collection to pull from. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, it provides like a number of new magic items, uh, new settings with maps and new monsters for you to pull and then mm-hmm. use in your own settings. So yeah, and it's a it's a beautiful you know it's a beautiful book still. The artwork is is awesome, and there's a lot of full you know full art. Um, there's a really <clears throat> huge map in the back, that a big tear out map in the back, which is mm-hmm. nice of of Candlekeep itself. Yep, um, I love those. I think they're a great but, addition in books now. But I would say that this is more like this is not so much like Tales from the Awning Portal, where like the missions are like, you know, they're more, more like okay, this is for this level, and you know, you're going to go through and fight all this stuff, and you know, go into the Underdark and do all these things. Like this is a little bit more of a storytelling yes. mystery. I agree. As the name implies, mm, yeah, aptly named, cool. some would say. Interesting. Are we Skeksis now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, not bad. Not, not bad, not bad. Bye, the cowboy. <laughs> I think, Bone Ponies, I think that's it. Without getting into the, all of the, the individual missions and explaining them to you, I mean, Which we can barely to... read. We're not going to yes. read to you. I'm I mean, if you pay player. us, we will. Oh, if you pay as we will come and read to you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll we'll, we'll, there. we'll limp through it. Yeah, we'll get there. Candle Keep Mysteries. Just check it out. Yeah. And yeah. if uh you're looking for additional adventures, you can always come over to Tabletop Totality and check out our uh our free adventures. We have a lot of adventures that actually free uh feature cool books that could probably get you into Candle Keep. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're thinking about throwing them together later on and uh, releasing that so that you could have an additional uh, grouping of books. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, folks. Adios. Yeah, that's it from the from the Bone Pony Ranch. Yep. Get out there and solve some mysteries. Keep some candles. Oh, dude, Steve. What? Steve, what? I don't, I don't got one though. So, well, it's, it's better. It's better than than nothing. No, I think, I think being silent and maintaining your honor and respect would be been better. <laughs> Damn, I'm going on the book tour. <laughs> <laughs> Adios, folks. Yeah, later, bone ponies. <laughs> later.